This segment of Naperville Sports Weekly is brought to you in part by the Naperville Sun. Negro Valley Girls basketball coach Mike Williams. Uh, we're here at practice. You guys getting back into it after the holidays. An 11-1 start to this season. What's what's kind of been the key to that for you guys being able to get out and get out to such a great start? Uh, well, we've got we've got great leaders coming back. Uh, Megan Duty, Amber Smith, Allison Hedrick, three kids that uh, are returning. They got significant time and. And obviously the freshmen, the six freshmen last year are now sophomores and they're seasoned veterans and they've gone through uh, an entire off season, which also helps. Uh, and, and just our depth. So some new kids that have come in, uh, Kristen Moores, Yamara Coleman's. Uh, I mean, you can just go down the line. It, it's really a nice problem to have to, uh, to be able to uh, switch in and switch out. It's almost like a hockey game. You're just switching lines. You know, and that's what we've been doing. So it's been working for us. And of course, you pick and choose your moments depending on who you play and the type of style they're playing, who gets on the floor and who doesn't. I think the biggest thing that we've seen that has really grown and matured with our team is the simple fact that our kids understand that they're, what their roles are mm -hmm. uh, and the, the, self, the unselfishness. Uh, you know, they're cheering each other on. And that, and that didn't just come. You know, that took a few games and a few weeks. And I think the most difficult thing is for the parents to accept that. Uh, the kids have already grasped it and, and, and engaged, have been very engaged with what's going on. Uh, now we just got everybody else is starting to slowly come into the fold, and um, that's been the, that's been the great part of this team. So just to watch them on film when you're not watching the game, you can see them all cheering, clapping for each other, and nobody's really worried about how many points I'm scoring, if I make an all-tournament, or how many minutes I'm getting. They're concerned about they just want to win, and that's been a, that's been nice. And seeing you guys play this year, you know, we were talking earlier, you, you have a rotation that's about 13 or 14 at times. How, how much did that kind of take a little bit of time for you to adjust to be comfortable to do that? Because I know a lot of coaches like to have a short leash at times. You know, I, I think um, the, 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 the most, I want to say the, um, how to be very diplomatic about it because it can come out incorrectly. What, the challenge for me is to, again, be able to look at some teams and in my mind, figure out and write some different lineups down. Of course, that changes as the game goes on. You make adjustments. But just to figure out, okay, these, this set of kids, this set of kids. And I think the other challenge is in practice, mixing them in with different kids and playing with each other. And I think that um, they've had to embrace that concept because it's easy for a kid who's frustrated to go, well, I'm not used to playing with her. Well, now you got to be used to playing with all 14. At any given time, there could be a different lineup. You know, I think one game we had 11, 12 different lineups at any given time. So they've learned to adapt to that. I've learned to adapt to it and also try to figure out um, the weaknesses and strengths of each player uh, to make sure that, hey, we've got to have some scorers on there. We've got to have some defensive players on there. What can each bring to the table? And um, that challenge we've accepted and we've gone with it. And so far, the formula has worked out well for us. Uh, 14 players. A big part of that is because you guys like to get up and run, you have quite a bit of speed. I imagine this has got to be a system that once the basics get down, that your play, it's got to be very player friendly, and I imagine they got to be enjoying being able to do that. Yeah, at any given night, um, defensively, you can have I mean, one game. Allison Hedrick, who's our post player, had nine steals. You know, and then and that's a post player. On other nights, it can be a guard. On one night, you know, Megan Duty can have 20 points, and some of the other guards only have eight or nine. And any other given night, that's what happens. So, uh, again, they bought into this system. Uh, and our, our, you know, our rule of thumb is, hey, if you can go more than three minutes at any time, then you're really not playing our style. Mm -hmm. So you'll see sometimes, hey, oh my gosh, it's two and a half minutes, I gotta come out, I gotta come out. But you know, I've gotta come out and I gotta, you know, I gotta get me out of here right now. Uh, sometimes if we extend their play a little longer than three minutes, like you can t looking out the corner of the eye, are you kidding me? I gotta go four minutes, five minutes like this? I can't do it. So if this style has worked for us and uh, fortunately we've got the 14 players that can win it. That's been great. I think definitely that's a big part of it. And you know, you talk about Megan Duty. She's the one that kind of stands out when anybody watches your team. What you know, we see what she brings on the court day to day. But what is it about you know being one of the few seniors? She has that varsity experience. Sure. That she's been there. She's done it. That can bring along a group of six sophomores that saw varsity action last season. I, I think uh, the combination of Megan and Amber both. Uh, you know, Megan has really matured this year. I know, and she she gave one phenomenal pregame speech during the uh, Thanksgiving tournament at York and talked about, you know, hey, you know, last year I was concerned about how many points I got. This year I'm all I'm concerned about is us winning. 
and I think that's a maturity factor that she's she's really matured into a great team player. And Amber has done the same thing. Uh, you know, she uh, had some issues with some asthma last year, and has really worked through that. Uh, has really come, you know, 100 miles, you know, ahead of where she should have been. Uh, and Rao has been a leader for the post players. So right now you got a leader for the guards and a leader for the post players, and it really takes care of itself. And then you got Allison Hedrick, who's in the wings. Uh, you know, who's really starting to be a silent leader and she's doing some great things. But I think that combination of those three kids uh, has really uh, turned us into the 11-1 team at this point. And, and, and you can listen, you know, during practice you hear Megan's voice the entire time, you hear Amber's voice, you hear Allison's, and they're all instructing, but in a positive way. And that's been the difference. So uh, the growing pains have come. They've all stepped up and they've been great leaders. We've had our, our team meetings and our, you know, kumbayas and all those things and with meeting of the minds and everybody's really come together and said, hey, this is what we want. And we know where we're going to look for that leadership, yet we're all leaders, but yet we know where we're going to look for that divine leadership and that's where it plays. Being with what you guys brought back this year, you know, good things were expected, you know, from here at 95th Street with you guys. 11 and 1, where you guys are at right now, how much farther does this team need to progress, you know, during those practice days to be able to achieve some of the goals you guys want towards the end of the season? I think what happens uh, as the season goes on, you know, you're playing one game almost every other night. Uh, you have a tendency to lose some of the fundamentals that basically have gotten you to be 11 and 1. Uh, and so our focus right now, we've got a little time frame here over break. Uh, we've got one game and we've got four or five practices in between each game. Uh, we're going back to the fundamentals. So we went back to the first two days of practice, practice plan, looked at it and said, hey, here's where we need to go. You know, the boxing out, the taking care of the basketball, the rotations on defense. And uh, actually, we were much further ahead than I thought we would be, so we were able to instill some new concepts that are going to be a catalyst for us for the second half of the season. Because you're going to, you can't come into the, to the games that you've played the Bartlett's and the Bonzies and play them twice mm -hmm. and do the same things you've done the first game because good coaches will make adjustments. Mm -hmm. So we've, done, we've put a few little wrinkles in uh, and it's hopefully that'll get us through January. Our goal is to get through January and we're in survival mode. Uh, you know, obviously if we, we want to win every game like everyone else, but if we can come out of that thing and, uh, and see the progression and not peak too early, get ourselves in position in February to start to peak at the right time. Because, you know, inevitably we could see Wabonji three times in the playoffs, Naperville Central again. I mean, there's teams that we could see right away. So, um, you know, back to the fundamentals. Every coach says that, but uh, our, our kids, the nice thing is they bought into it. You're right, coach, we need to box out better. We need to, we need to run more, we need to do things. So that's been what's nice about it. When you talk about the rotation that uh, you guys do run with that, you know, 13, 14 players, you know, shuffling some people in every two or three minutes, who are uh, some of the people that, you know, maybe don't get the headlines that we're, we're not hearing about that maybe sure. are flying around under the radar that are an important key to this team? You know, <laughs> you talk about 14 players, I could probably go down a list and name about seven or eight. I think that the, the young sun heroes are the ones like the Brenna Dunkles, uh, the Lauren DeVicuses, the um, uh, Kennedy Brosh, who just come off an injury. You know, Kennedy, we gave the, the Christmas trophy to because she was just completely supporting everything, high fives, had faith in the team. The, you know, those three kids right there, and the, and the Bryce Menendez, who's a freshman, is really trying to engulf everything, which is hard to jump from middle school ball into a varsity situation and be on a team that has a target on their back. Those four kids really stand out to me uh, as far as the unsung heroes. Uh, then you talk, you know, the Shea Robinson, who's, um, who's, who's in here, moved here in last spring and is trying to figure out everything. And, you know, she's got a lot of pressure on her because she's a great at athlete. The Kristen Moores, the Mara Coleman. I mean, I can just go down the list of kids. Uh, but those kids right there have really done a great job of, of buying into what we're doing and, and being supportive. And you know what? It could be real, it could go sour quick. Those kids that don't get the, the minutes, like, you know, yeah, we rotate a lot, but they may not get significant time. But those are the ones that are in here practicing hard coming afterwards, staying, coming early, working harder, making everybody else better, and in turn, they're getting better too. So um, the thing I really believe in, our philosophy, is we're gonna rotate all these kids in. Because somewhere down the line, that Lauren DeVicus is gonna have to come on the court in a crucial situation because of illness or injuries or fouls and, and play. So if she doesn't have that experience, or the Brenda Dunkles or the Kennedys, how can you expect them to be successful if you don't give it to them now? So that's, our, that's where we're going with that. Definitely. Well, as somebody that's been a coach in this area for a while, and so you're saying I'm old now? Yeah, no, no, <laughs> yeah it's I'm okay. Not, yeah, I'm, yeah, not yeah, to, I'm not ancient. getting to that yeah. point yet. No, but, uh, a little older than me. <laughs> but where, what we've seen, a, kind of the girls' game in this area kind of evolve. It seems like, you know, you look at a team like you guys, you look at a Bennett Academy, Naperville North even, it seems like they don't have as much size, 
So they seem to be running out five players that can all handle the ball, that sure. can all shoot it. How much is that? Have you kind of seen the game evolve towards that in the past yeah. three, four, five years? I don't. I, I think you uh, you don't see the height that you used to see in, in women's basketball anymore. I think a lot of that is attributed to. Uh, you know, with the volleyball situation, the club situation, they're they're going that way. So you don't have as many kids playing two sports like you used to. I know, you know, Brenda Dunkel's six four, six five, and she plays volleyball. So she's one of the rare uh, few kids that can that balance it, that force themselves to balance it because they want to play both. Which I think in high school you should have that ability. And I think it helps you out in college. So I think what the game has transformed to is to a, a fast, quick. Uh, speedy game. I remember a couple years back when we went down to, we go to Portland, Oregon every year for a tournament in the summer, and we were playing a team from Hawaii. And uh, it was kind of nice, they all, we all shook hands, they gave us pineapples, you know, it was really kind of, our kids were laughing, and we were much bigger. Uh, I don't think they had a kid over 5'7", and they just whooped us. I mean, they rotated 14 kids in and out, and they just trapped us everywhere. They used their speed, their quickness, ball handling, and their shooting to take care of the game. And I think that's kind of where the game is headed now. You're, I don't. I think the days of uh, you know, of course, you're going to see the kid at Baylor who's you know almost seven foot, mm -hmm. but I don't, you don't see many of those anymore. Uh, and so I think those days is transforming into a fast, quick game. And you know, it's kind of like the, the NFL. You look at the West Walkers and the Edelmans. I mean, that game is transferred into a, those type of games. So that's the type of player I think you're going to see. For sure, we're starting to you know get to the point where the season starts to almost become a grind. You talk about sure. January, a couple of UEC games a week, maybe a non-conference game mixed in. What what do you guys need to do? Those one or two things when we get to that point, you know, where it's you know win or go home. What what does Nico Valley need to do to be able to get back to winning regional titles to sure. get into the sectional? Uh, more than anything else, right now we've pretty much um, put the pedal to the metal. We've, we're pushing them hard in practice. Uh, I, I think it's a fine line of, of pushing them too hard, and I think that happens not only here but also in the outside arena. You know, with the press and with parents and with family and uh, that type, and peers. I think you have to have that balance, and as we push harder, uh, we also let off the gas a little bit. I, you know, most, most schools don't give three or four days off. You know, we're giving four days off. We're going to give them another four days off because I really think that, yeah, we've pushed them hard here, but once we, they need to rest. They need to be kids, they need to have fun, they need to smile, they need to do some other things. So when they come back in here, hey, you know, they're ready to go. So that balance is the key. Um, and, and we've always done that. This year, I think we have uh, much more talent than we've had. You know, to work with. Uh, last year we had a great group. This year we're even deeper. Uh, and so for us to keep our focus, back to fundamentals, and uh, you know, relax and have some fun with it, that's going to be the key. Well, Mike, we appreciate Thanks you letting us come by. Uh, have a happy new year. You too.